So what are the 10 ways that we may be consuming arsenic unknowingly? I was surprised to find out a few years ago about arsenic being in certain foods that we consume. Of course, arsenic is a natural element and it is found in the earth, the water and the soil. However, there are safe and unsafe levels of arsenic. And there are also two forms of arsenic. There's the organic form of arsenic, which contains carbon and the inorganic form of arsenic, which of course does not contain carbon and is the more dangerous form. And it can be emitted from copper smelts, glass manufacturing plants, pigment plants, textile plants, metal um, places that you know form and, and make metal things, wood preservative plants and ammunition plants. So if you live anywhere near one of those places, you may consider that there could possibly be arsenic in the soils and whatnot around you. The body converts inorganic arsenic into the breakdown product or metabolite called dimethyl arsenic acid or DMA. And over a period of time, inorganic arsenic can be toxic and even fatal. So where are some of the places that we might find arsenic? In well water and in especially third world countries, so this may not affect a great number of you, it's best to have your well water checked if you do happen to have a well. According to the FDA, 10 parts per billion is the allowable amount that can be found in well water. And some places where this may be higher are Argentina, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Chile, China, India, Mexico, Pakistan, Vietnam, and the United States of America. Poultry may also contain some arsenic. So back in the 1940s, arsenic was actually added to medicated animal feeds and it was put there for faster growth and increased feed efficiency. And the FDA stepped in and required that feed manufacturers remove three of the four types of arsenic that was found in feeds around 2013. However, it's important to note that some vet drugs still contain arsenic. If the chicken, the poultry, the turkey, whatever is being given some sort of vet drug, it may have arsenic in it. And of course, you're consuming the eggs and then the meat possibly. But when it comes to meats and animal products in general, the FDA allows animals that produce foods to have 0.5 parts per million in eggs and two parts per million in pig meats. Organic arsenic also has the ability, so remember we talked about the organic and the inorganic types of arsenic. Organic meaning that it contains carbon, but it actually has the ability in animals to convert to the inorganic form in the tissues of the animals. So that's kind of concerning. And so if we take a look at the consumption of poultry, in the years 1965 to 2013, the average consumption was about 30 pounds per year per person in 1965 and 83 pounds per person in 2013. That's a huge jump. And what, what has happened, if you look at it, is back in those days, I think people would sit down for a meal and have dinner and have some chicken with their meal and some potatoes and a vegetable or whatever. But now there's with so many fast food places like the KFCs and the Popeye chickens and all these types of places, there's chicken all around, there's poultry all around. People are able to pick it up and eat it any time they like just about. And if we think about the years from say 1965 to 2013, You'll probably remember there was a lot of marketing that went on saying that red meat was so bad for everybody. And a lot of people started to consume a lot more chicken, turkey, and that kind of thing. Of course, dairy products will also have um, a, an amount of arsenic that can be found in them. Fish and shellfish, which though typically tends to be the organic form of arsenic, and it is typically excreted rapidly from the body. Now, this is a big one, and that is rice. Rice tends to absorb more than most crops. And if you think about maybe rice cereal that's given to babies, now that's a scary concept. A lot of people will recommend that young babies have rice cereal as one of the first foods, like solid food, well, it's not quite solid, but a food that they would have. And this comes, rice, it comes from places where the water and the soil is affected with the inorganic forms of arsenic. Fruit and fruit juices, and this of course depends on the soil that the fruit is grown in. Vegetables, leafy veg, root vegetables, there's uh, arsenic that can be found in the skins, apples, pears, and grapes, 
mostly from past pesticide use and juices. And again, I mentioned before, it's just the same as the fruit. Um, if the soil that the fruit is grown in has arsenic in it, it, it can pick it up into the fruit and then therefore it is going into the juices as well. And the worst part of that is if you happen to have well water or even another type of water, a city water that happens to have arsenic in it, and maybe you're having fruit juice from concentrate. And as we, as you may or may not know, arsenic, you know, in very small amounts can be not harmful for the body, but over, you know, if there's a buildup of arsenic and that's when there's a problem. So if you think about having a fruit juice that is from concentrate and then you add water to it that may have arsenic in it, and then you increase the amount of arsenic going into your body. If you have tobacco products, tobacco leaves actually take up a big amount of arsenic from the soil. So a lot of the soils used to be treated with lead arsenate as insecticide that would probably remain in the soil to some degree and that could come up into the tobacco leaves and then you know you're using the tobacco so beer and wine can also have arsenic in them studies show that those who consume beer and wine have arsenic levels 30 percent higher in their system than those that don't and those who have five or six glasses of wine per week could have up to 20% more arsenic in their system than someone who doesn't consume. So how can arsenic affect you? If you have acute arsenic poisoning, you would have vomiting, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. But we're talking about slow amounts of arsenic over long periods of time in this case. And what you might notice is skin pigmentation changes, lesions or hard patches, on the palms and the soles of the feet known as hyperkeratosis. It is a known carcinogen and it is associated with skin, lung, bladder, kidney, and liver cancer. And low concentrations given to mice over long periods of time, similar to what we might consume in drinking water over lar large periods of time, actually caused the mice to develop lung cancer. It can predispose children to health issues later in life. Studies show that increased incidence of lung and bladder cancer up to 40 years after the exposure has ceased. So a child may have lived in a home where arsenic was in the water and they were consuming that over a long period of time and then perhaps grew up and moved out or they moved from that house. And 40 years later, there was um, incidence of lung and bladder cancer. And it is interesting to note that low levels of arsenic have also been associated with metabolic issues such as diabetes. So what can you do to avoid ingesting arsenic unknowingly in some of the foods that I mentioned? If you're gonna be purchasing rice, you wanna make sure that you, first of all, purchase a very good organic type rice and you know a good quality, not something super cheap and always rinse it thoroughly before you're cooking it. If you are buying processed foods of any sort, which I don't encourage, but if you are, also try and check for products that don't have rice in them. Rice-based processed foods are something you want to stay away from. And something you want to watch out for in uh, as an ingredient, especially what they would consider like a healthy type of nutrition bar, is high levels of rice syrup. They use it as a sweetener. And a recent study by Dartmouth College showed that high levels of arsenic were in these processed bars that were actually supposed to be nutritional bars, like good nutrition bars. Get your city or well water tested and you can actually send out a sample for an independent test to see what the levels of arsenic may or may not be in your water. And I would strongly encourage if you have a young baby at home and you're in that stage of converting over to some, you know, moving away from breast milk or starting to incorporate some food into their system, usually around four or six months of age is when you want to do that. Um, I would strongly discourage using a rice cereal. It's not a very good quality product to be introducing into your infant's diet anyways. And so I would consider using something like sweet potatoes, carrots, yams, avocados, squash, and bananas, those types of things. You can lightly steam them and cook them just enough so they're soft, and then you can mash them up with a fork and feed that. And you can even mix a little bit of breast milk into those foods. 
I would try and avoid fruit juice and I especially would avoid fruit juice anyways. Um, I don't encourage people to drink fruit juices, but that is a, a place that I mentioned that you might be finding arsenic in the fruit juice. And I wouldn't use any rice milk. Um, some people have lactose intolerance and so they've quit using dairy, uh, rice milk, and you've probably heard of something, I think it's called rice dream, which is like a rice ice cream. I would stay away from that. If you have symptoms of arsenic toxicity, which you probably want to get checked and confirmed if that is in fact what the issue is. There is a way to counteract that and you can take folic acid. So if someone's being constantly exposed, maybe you find out that your well water has arsenic in it and you've been exposed for periods of time. Folic acid and in fact the recommended dietary allowance, which is 400 micrograms daily, does reduce blood levels of arsenic. Of by about 14%, but over time, if we can stay away from whatever the source of the arsenic is, plus having the folic acid, then you can help uh, correct the problem. So I hope this video has been good and informative for you, and I do look forward to seeing you again next time.